Henry, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, nice background. Yeah, my wife. I'm on my wife's computer. She hooked it all up. I can't do none of that. <laughs> Because first I thought you got a hoop in the background. I'm like, oh man, this got to be nice. <laughs> no, I do not. No, I do not. What's going on, man? Yeah. Everything good? Where you at? I'm in Russia now, so we're slowly what? getting back to normal. Where gyms are starting to be opening up. I mean, obviously we've been working out for a while, and it's just most of the work was outside, but. You know, not that many pros from VTB want to do the, the work outside, shooting on the outside hoop. I feel you. I st outside is yeah. tough. Also for the joints. You know, once I got to a certain age, I had to give up outside. But mine, what I had was, um, so I don't have, I have hoop at my dad's place. And so it's, it's with the grass and pretty much ground. So oh. I'm not that bad on the joints. I have a dog that will play defense. <laughs> but so, only, only the young guys, the ones who are trying to earn their minutes in VTB, only those came as of now. And so now most of the work will be with the vets since the gyms are starting to open up. What city are you in? I'm now near Samara. Samara, okay. Yeah, Samara. but I'll be, I'll, be going, I'll be going to Moscow on Friday. Okay. What's Samara? Krasnikrilia? Yep. <laughs> Cross me clearly. I remember that. I remember that. That's cool. <laughs> All right. So what exactly is this? You, you, I saw you, you know, you've been doing this with a couple of people I know. So I've seen you doing some interviews. Um, and this is just a platform. You just got zoom. Are these, you know? Yep. Yeah. It was me and Nick, uh, the director of basketball operations and player development for South Bay. So okay. we have a company, we created a company about two years ago named global star basketball okay. camps and so we we're doing the camps all over all over the world uh we only did one so far in austria and we're planning to do many more this summer and then i was just thinking how how i can still find the ways to impact people and Im impact coaches while most of those of us have to stay home and i figured out first i was doing lives on instagram and then i'm like okay why why wouldn't we try to do like a summit coaching summit just so people can learn and at the end of the day, we'll save it all, upload it to YouTube, just so people who missed it, they can watch it online. Can watch it, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, the goal is not to, the goal is not to earn money through this because you, yeah, that's good to see that a lot of coaches are trying to do all those uh, clinics, online stuff. And so to me, that would be, I want to say that would be too much to try and earn money on that. Mm -hmm. while all the people have limitations just not not our way not your but way yeah first we, it. first we had i want to say nine people and then i think about three days before we started we started adding another three and then another four and then it's basically right now we have i want to say 25 coaches or something like that I was going to speak as some about some player development stuff, but now it's just, I'm trying to, I mean, me and Nick were talking. I'm like, man, I'd rather first, I'd rather let all the coaches go because the NBA season is going to be back on. And I'm like, let them do it first. And then whenever, whatever time is left, I can hop in quickly. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. I like, right, so I like what you guys have been doing so far. You know, obviously I, I saw Kelly on here. That's like a you know a brother to me. So that was I think that was how I first got introduced to, you know, seeing you do what you do. Mm -hmm. And then I followed you and then I think I've seen you have one or two other people on here. And you know, I think it's it's all good stuff, man. So I encourage mm -hmm. you guys to keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> yes, sir. No other way. And when I was getting, when we were getting ready, those posters with the picture, uh, I came up with one where there was you and Kelly. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> My man. Yeah, he, took, he took care of me in Kazan. I was, man, I was struggling in Kazan living. And he, you know, he, okay. he helped me out a lot. You know, just helped me find my way, find my groceries, you know, all of that. And he spoke Russian. So, 
I mm-hmm. was used to Moscow. I was used to St. Petersburg, but Kazan was a little different. And uh-huh. uh, he, he helped my transition there. And I, I had one of the best seasons of my career there. So, mm-hmm. Plus, he's half Russian anyway, so he got to speak the language. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something like that. You know, I also, I, I guess, you know, Russia's been good to me. You know, one of my other good friends is J.R. Holden. So everybody who got a Russian uh-huh. passport is like, yeah, those guys all are good the- to me. <laughs> you got all the Russians. The yeah. third one Andre Kirilenko, and now you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. But, but yeah, I guess we we can start. We already have uh, we already have nine people, so it's already three minutes uh, past two. And then the ones who missed it, I'll also stream it a little bit on Instagram, just so the ones who missed it maybe can connect right now. But yeah, we'll figure it out when we move. So uh, first of all, I wanted to introduce to everybody Henry Domerkant. He's a former, I want to say, EuroLeague All-Star. I don't want to say nothing else, just EuroLeague All-Star. And now he's currently assistant coach for Windy City Bulls. So his experience speaks for itself, and it's just it's a pleasure to have him here. Uh, glad to be here. Hello, everyone. You know, let's go and get, jump, dive right in, Bossy. I'm ready. I'm hot. I'm hot. So the topic was uh, how was your t- transition from playing into coaching? And I was also thinking about the questions that were kind of like, I wanted to see how you looked at the game when you were playing, especially later in the years. So uh, when you were playing, can you tell me how did you prepare for the games when watching the film or stats on the team? Was there anything specific that you wanted to look at to understand what team tendencies are? Uh I mean, that's a big question, a lot of questions. But my, my first response is this. When, uh, as I got older, you know, and I was more confident, um, I tried to control what I can control. And I believe, you know, we, you know I'm going to start using my coach's talk now. I'm a coach, but greatness has a routine. And I was real big with routines. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I tried to script out what I could do, uh, what days I would shoot before the game. The I did the same mm-hmm. warm up before the game, so I did that. I okay. did definitely had had a lot of routines built into my life that um, helped me feel confident. I was I, I I gained a lot of my confidence through preparation. So my pre, my confidence came from my preparation. Mm-hmm. So I had to prepare a certain way. Um, but as far as when I looked at the other team, I always wanted to know who was their best player. Obviously, who I would be guarding. Um, Cause I definitely, you know, I was known as a scorer, but I took defense serious, believe it or not. A lot of people didn't think so. On some teams, I was the defensive stopper, especially when I was young. So, and my time during the NBA, or the NBA, during the uh, Euro League, when I started in the Euro League, uh, it was only two Americans per team. And a lot of them were my position, the shooting guard position. And so it was a lot of scores. So I had to, you, you could get embarrassed if you didn't show up to play. So I think definitely, you know, being prepared defensively and having to go against, you know, Juan Carlos Navarro and try not try to guard him without touching him, <laughs> you know, and things like that <laughs> was um, my, my preparation was really being prepared for myself. And I always thought, throw the first punch. That's the way I went. Throw the first punch. Throw the first punch. That's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And talking about the defense, and you mentioned that you were trying to see who's your who's your matchup is going to be. Uh, when watching the film on your opponents uh, individually, whom you'll be guarding, were, was there anything that you would look at specifically? Maybe how he shoots, how he's getting ready for the shot, or something else. Um, really, I, at at that time, I wish I knew what I knew now. Then, but I wanted to just take away their strengths. If they were a shooter. And they like to get shots off of, you know, floppy or some action back then. Uh, I wanted to take certain things away, like make them do something else. If they always go to their right, I wanted to force them to their left hand and then live with it and try to contest shots, you know. Or if they were, you know, if they usually got shots off of pick and roll, then maybe I try to force them away from the screen or be really physical before the pick and roll. But I just try to take away one of their strengths. And like I said, one thing I found, especially in Europe, is how to stop a score is make them play defense. That, that's the way I always think. I always change everything back to offense, right? So 
If I want to okay. borrow out the game, score on them three times in a row. You know, that's what I was thinking. If I wanted, you know, Diamantidis or some of the other guys out the game at the coast, then put pressure on them on the other end. Mm -hmm. make, them work, okay. make them work on both ends, basically. Okay, yeah, just so they're not relaxing on defense and no, uh, saving the energy. For no, and talking about uh, the players, who was the hardest matchup? Who was the hardest person for you to guard? Uh, there was a few guys. It's, it's probably maybe surprise you, maybe won't. But um, for some unknown reason, I'm not going to say it was the hardest to guard, but I've guarded some of the best players, all, you know, best guards in Europe throughout that time, whether it was, like I mentioned Navarro twice, but Trajan Langdon or Diamantidis or whether it's Spinulis or whoever you can think of, but one who typically would try to come at me, I felt, was Alex Scales. Uh, Keith Langford okay. was one who I really respected, Keith Langford. And then, um, obviously, like I said, I always, I always bring up Navarro because I felt like, I really felt like you couldn't touch him or you're getting a foul, <laughs> you know? <laughs> He okay. was so good at he was so good at creating <laughs> contact and drawing fouls, so it was hard to guard just because you were worried about fouls so much. But those are three, I think that that stick out early. Th those are three that really stick out, you know, in my. Mm -hmm. I would think that uh, that Keith will be there on the list for sure. Uh, <laughs> that's that's no doubt <laughs> he got better though when he first started he was mainly a driver and i knew he wanted to go left so i would okay. you know, really want to make him shoot uh, over my hand contested as he got more dangerous he got more confident he started to shoot the ball better and then it was really tough but i thought he got he got going from going left and getting an and one so you take the way him going to the basket and make him live off jump shot shooting over your hand then hey i felt like i was doing my job early on <laughs> And so you you said what uh, what was hard about guarding Navarro that you couldn't touch him, and if we take anyone either Alex Scales or Keith, uh, what is what is the reason why you put them on that list? Like what is uh, what is that thing that they were doing on offense that was not easy to guard? Uh, I mean, different. Like Alex Scales was a guy who could heat up, you know, instantly, and. And you couldn't time him because he 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 would take any shot. Like he wouldn't. He was just dangerous every time he had the ball. Keith, he was just he was explosive, but he also was physical. He was also he had a you know a build and strength to be physical while he played, but also um, he was just really good in pick and roll. He was really good when he had an advantage. So whether it's off a screen and using angles and still finishing through contact, he was really good doing doing some of those things another guy who was really good when i was young who was older was ibrahim kutluai and he wasn't very athletic he uh mm -hmm. he didn't wasn't a great ball handler but he found ways to find to get get his shot off and he was real effective at doing it and he, he always made a good percentage so he was a he was definitely a matchup where I, I had to lock in and be really prepared he was so well at using screens and creating advantage creating separation while using screens so different guys like that. They all had different strengths, but I can tell why they had success for so long in the year. Mm -hmm. And I feel that you mentioned uh, using the screens and how players can do that, get open by using the screens. I feel that it's one of the lost arts where now more players are focused on like what they can work on with having the ball in their hands while this is still something that can get your minutes on the court. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I think, you know, that's what looks good, right? And we're in that age of social media and guys are doing all the dribbling and all. And, you know, it takes a unique skill. You know, James Harden is a unique player. He's something like we've never seen, right? And he's one of the mm -hmm. masters at it. But um, it was a different time, different generation. And now, you know, for team, the way teams played and mm -hmm. it was more screen oriented, especially in Europe. And I think, you know, that's part of the reason I think I, I was able to have some success that I had was because I just I actually studied guys and how they use screens and it, it benefited me a lot. OK, OK. And how did you get ready mentally uh, for the game? Did you do something to calm yourself down or you wanted to kind of like hype to get hyped up? 
What was your thing? Uh, like I said, I had a process before each game, but one thing I, I made sure I did, especially later in my career, uh, before the coach came in and talked, you know, you have your few minutes of quiet time and I would visualize, I visualize me making my first shot in to the point where um, I would see how it went through the net. I would visualize another person from their team taking the ball out of bounds. Like I would go through that whole process of seeing, seeing the ball go in or visualizing me doing things well that I may need to do in that game. I would, and it would only be like one or two minutes and it, it might sound strange, but it helped calm me down and help me lock into the moment. And I just wanted to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think that's really important to hear. I see there are a couple of the young players, one is from Uruguay, another one's from Russia. And so that's very important for them to hear just because not that many younger players or even their coaches realize that visualization is not just something you do for fun. It is something really helpful. And if you can start using that at a younger age, that will be like your advantage when you keep playing yeah, definitely. And, and also, you know, it's meant like mental reps, right? Your mind is going through whatever you're going through, just like you walk on in the court. And I, I believe there's, you know, that saves the body, especially as you get older. And you can just, you know, you can prepare yourself mentally. You know, this game is more mental than anything. So any way you can get that advantage and use your mind, I think you'll grow from it. Mm -hmm. And how did you come up with that visualization thing? Did somebody uh, recommend it to you? I'm sure I heard it somewhere. I don't remember where, but I'm sure, I'm sure I heard it somewhere. And I tried it. You know, we tried anything. And if you feel like it helped you, you, you stick with it. It was one of those type okay. of things. Uh, and, yeah, it felt good. And, you know, I just, it just started to be a, a habit for me. Okay, got it. And in one of our recent presentations, I think yesterday, one of the coaches asked, uh, how do coaches deal with kind of like pressure? Do you still now, even being a coach, do you still now do something like that before the games or you do something different? Uh, I don't really visualize how the game is, is going. I may think of some situations, but I try to calm myself down. Now okay. I, I, I pray. And I say, you know, I, I just want to, you know, help my team in the best way I can. So I try to be, be there in the moment, be prepared and be prepared to look for solutions. Like, I just want to get my mind thinking, <laughs> no, not, get away from, cancel out a lot of noise and start thinking about solutions of possible problems. You know, that's what I try to do. And okay. Really focus on the game. Okay. Okay. Got it. And uh, if now if we're talking about you coaching, when did you realize that you want to do it? Was it while you were still playing? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I always said I never wanted to coach. <laughs> and then, you know, as okay. you get older, as you get older and your phone, the contracts stop coming and you start thinking about, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, I knew I wanted to work with basketball. I didn't know how or what, what, and, I kind of landed in coaching. It kind of fell into coaching and I'm, you know, God, you know, God worked it out and I'm glad because, you know, I'm really growing into it. I'm growing to, I really love it and I enjoy it. So. Mm -hmm. And your first year you were, did you go, did, did you already work for Windy City or it was another team? I was with Maine Red Claws in the Celtics organization, the G League team for the Celtics organization. And so thankful for that start because, Actually, I was in Romania in training camp. I was actually playing really well. And I hurt my Achilles to where I just needed maybe two or three months off. And, okay. and um, I was 36, I think, at the time. And my, my wife helped me come to the decision that <laughs> it was time to shut it down. And I was fortunate that... Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, my transition was pretty fast. I, that was on a Thursday, I think, where that decision happened. And that next Tuesday, I was in Boston interviewing for a job. So. Wow. <laughs> That's fast. Yeah. And I, I mean, I had contact with them in the summer before I got asked to go play in Romania. I didn't know if I was going to get a job or not. Uh -huh. So I, I was making my contacts in summer league, doing things like that. And then once... And finally determined that my career was over 
they brought me in and then I got the job that week. So I went from player to coach in six days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the fastest transition that I, that I can ever think of. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I knew when I was getting ready for the interview, uh, I remember that we met first time uh, in States during the draft combine. And I remember you were not with Windy City Bulls. And I was trying to think, I was sure it was Maine, but I was not 100% sure. But yeah, now yeah, it was Maine, good to know. Maine Red Claws got my start. I'm, I'm so thankful too, because the Boston organization, you know, is a spe- I think it's a special organization. I think Brad Stevens, you know, he thinks differently. Um, so I learned a lot. It was a good place for me to start because I got to, you know, hear a lot of different opinions, really smart people and, you know, some different ideas than I've heard before as far as basketball minds. And I, I think it really uh, accelerated my growth. Mm-hmm. Got it. And what was what was the biggest challenge that you faced in your first year of coaching? First year of coaching. Um, there, I, there was a lot. Honestly, one of them initially was grasping the video and really learning how to not just use my computer for iTunes or for movies, but actually using the software, sports code, synergy, and doing those things. I think initially that was the big shock, you know, spending so much time working on a computer. But also once, you know, I told you I got hurt, but once I started getting Mm -hmm. healthy, I still was, you know, itching to play. Like when the game wasn't going well, I wanted to be out in the game trying to <laughs> trying to be the one that held the team, you know, that way instead of using my mind and using strategy and finding other ways for solutions. So I think I dealt with that also my first year. But between that and learning the mm-hmm. learning the salt computer software, I think were some of the biggest hurdles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. It would take it would take a while to learn to do that. I still remember how when I first did the video breakdowns for Aaron Jackson and we were in China, we didn't have no synergy access. I would just have to watch the game all over again the online uh, through like Chinese YouTube. Mm-hmm. And so it would take me, I want to say about first games, it was like two and a half hours to cut down oh, one wow. game and make two video breakdowns for him. And I was like, man, there's got to be a faster way. And so ended up by the end of our first season together, I think I needed only maybe 50 minutes, but still to go through like Chinese YouTube. Only after I figured out, okay, Synergy, here you go. <laughs> yeah, now second spectrum, right? But it's still like, <laughs> yeah, I haven't tried that yet, but hopefully soon. Because as of now, I still feel that Synergy – is good, but if you want to see like when the player is not touching the ball, just see how he reacts. It's still there's no better way just to watch the full game. Yeah, one hundred percent. There's some things you can't gain, you know, and there's only so many categories, right, in synergy that you can click on. But you know, mm-hmm. when you want to find some of the little nuances, or you got to watch the game. Mm-hmm. And before I ask the next one, I want I just wanted to say to all the people who are listening. You're more than welcome to type your questions to Henry in the chat and we'll we'll ask him. And so Henry's pretty open, you can tell. So so do I. <laughs> so that's that's up to y'all to type the questions. Uh, and I wanted to ask you about also video breakdown for players. Since you have been a player on a higher level and now you're coaching on a higher level, uh, what it how does the ideal film session look for you? How long would you make the clip to make sure the player is focused through the whole video? Um, It depends. It's there's, I don't think there's no Mm -hmm. one correct way or one uniform way. It depends on the player and depends on the message you're trying to get across. Um, But generally speaking, my, my actually philosophy has grown into this. I didn't start off at this. Um, But uh, if it's, I like to reinforce the positive behavior. I'm leaning more towards that. You know, I've heard one coach say four positives to one negative. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes that's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. But what I try to do, I try to get consistent themes. Like the theme of this edit is, okay, physicality. You you, you didn't show more physicality. Uh, Spacing, maybe you ain't running to the corner or reshaping the floor you're in. And um, it could be finishing 
or whatever, you know? So I try to have a theme, maybe one, two to three things, and it may be two or three clips of evidence proving the theme that I've already, that I'm talking to you about. And, and so I'm just trying to hit, talk to them about it, mm-hmm. show them it, and then encourage them with, you know, maybe some good ones that they've done or maybe some good ones from somebody else. So, but I'm, I'm okay. starting to see as a, as a coach and as a, you know, what I'm seeing more and more is guys may respond better to seeing the good, like, Hey, this is what we want as opposed to we don't like when you do this, let's just show them okay. the good. And then, you know, but you know, like I said, so some, some are longer, some are shorter, but I try to keep them no more than 12. Sometimes I, I try to keep it, you know, under 10 or five, six, you know, it depends on whatever point out what, what I try to do as little as possible to get the point across, you know. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about the minutes or the number of clips? Number of clips. Okay. Okay. Got it. And how often, uh, how often would you show the negative ones? I know it's still like kind of like the general question depends on the player. Mm-hmm. But uh, for example, would you show negatives before the game? I, I would, you know, with some of my guys, but I try to make sure I've built enough trust and enough to where, you know, they'll, if, if I, especially if I know them, they'll respond well to it. But I try to finish with positives, but I may show a couple of negatives just because we don't have many practice days or much time sometimes in between games. But, um, but yeah, I think that whatever I can use to teach in the moment, but it's also how you communicate. Like I, I'm not going to show them the clip and say, hey, you suck. Look at this. You know, I say, look, this is this is an area where I think we can grow. Here's what you did last game. Here's what I think you need to do this game. Now let's go on the court. And I got a couple of drills or things I want you to do that will help you when you get in this situation again. You know. OK, OK, got it. And if we're talking about the team session, the team video breakdown, uh, obviously you've been a player. And obviously you had coaches who would have team sessions, video sessions for like two hours. Man. <laughs> uh, I used to go what to would be, What would be the ideal? How long would you want it to be <laughs> to make sure you're not fall asleep? No, it just depends on the message you're trying. Like I said, the message you want to give. If sometimes players need to really, you know, see a theme and see what, you know, they've done wrong, especially you want to touch certain things, whether it's transition defense and offense or tra- transition defense or your help and your help defense or is defensive rebounding and this or whether it's offense, you know, it's going to be longer when it's the whole team, but have a theme and I, you know, be wise about you can't address everything right in one mm-hmm. film session. So just pick your points. So you can drive your message. If you say everything, then they're not going to focus on anything. But if you really mm-hmm. hone in and focus on three things or two things or four things, then the message becomes louder and clearer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got it. And I have, I pretty much have two more questions. Uh, one is just specifically about you teaching skills. What is your favorite thing that you love teaching the most on the court? I love teaching the most. Wow. <laughs> I think one of the things I guess that comes easiest, I don't know if I love teaching the most is, you know, I gotten pretty comfortable with, you know, our defensive coverages and rotations. And I think you can control more and it's more, it's more uh, black and white than offense, right? Okay. O- offense is so, you know, can be up and down and there's a little, there's a little bit, it can be cha- chaotic. So defense mm-hmm. definitely, you know, is something I feel pretty confident in teaching. Also, I love working with guys who come who want to, you know, their technique on actually shooting, like rebuilding, trying to rebuild or fix the mechanics in the shot, you know, slowing down, trying to break it, make it simple. And, you know, I, you know, I love shooting the ball. I like seeing the ball go in. I like helping guys do the same thing. So. Okay, got it. And through your observation, obviously with the main and both with Windy City, what do you see? Uh, what younger players are usually struggling with? The ones who maybe are just out of college or internationals who are just coming to play their first year in states. Uh, one thing initially I think is adjusting to the three point line. Right? Okay, mm-hmm. adjusting to the distance of the three point line, 
Um, also, the three seconds in the defensive key, you know, okay. learning that. Also, I think some of the terminology because, you know, everywhere has their own language. If I could say that was one of the hardest things to adjust being a first time coach as well. Did I just see Manchal Mar Markish Vili on there? Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think learning the new language, you know, that, you know, for some of the terminology for me as a coach, I think that that was an issue as well. Manu! <laughs> Let me let me turn his sound on just so he can respond to you. This guy. Yeah, now he can. My, my Manu, just, man. Oh. Good to see. Yes, I think I can hear you. Can you? Good, good to see you, man. I didn't know you were doing this, and happy to see you here. My friend just sent me the link to register. Oh, wait. Hey, well, I'm glad they did, man. Good to see you, man. Yes. That's a yes. talented player right there, man. That's a talented player right there, Manu. No, 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 no. I just came. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it, man. You are the quickest scorer and best scorer I have played with, man. Come on. Hey, man. <laughs> He's too kind, Michael, man. You see? Michael, He's a nice yeah, guy, man. He's a nice guy, man. That's all. <laughs> Glad to have you, Manu. Yes. Thank you. Thank Manu, you. Manu, you're on the interview, man. Who, who is the toughest... Who was the toughest wing player you had to guard in Europe? Man, I had to guard too many of them. I know. It's a tough question, right? Really. <laughs> Oof, very tough. Very tough question. You know, I had, I had, I had my categories. There were categories that run a lot. Yes. But they run a lot on the coming up. Say butis, say butis. Yes, yes, not bad. And then uh, Kaukenas, you remember Kaukenas? Yeah, I played with play Kaukenas, you know that. They, yes, Navarro, it's hard to chase Navarro, man. He and, knows everything. And then if you touch him? Yes. <laughs> hey, if you catch him, it's foul. I, I told you, didn't I tell <laughs> <It's> you? <foul. laughs> I told you, he was tough, La Bamba, he was tough. Yes. Yes, okay, this is yes, a this is yes, a player yes, development yes, call yes. though. It's a player development call. So, you know, for the young guys in Europe, yes. for the young guys in yes. Europe, starting yes. out their first second year, okay. Yes. Uh, what do you think are you know? You can't work on everything right away. So, what do you think are some things they should focus on when they're just starting to start developing or working to try and get to the highest level of Europe? What are some things that you think they need to have, especially? For your position, what are some things they need to have to be successful at your position? Uh, you know, I, I would say in my experience, what I have seen coming overseas, American players, the best thing what they can do is adapt the coach's needs. Mm. Fast they adapt, the time twice, they are so good, easier for them. What I've seen is coming overseas. Uh, smart enough, cute enough to adapt the coaching system because the professionals play, you know how they play. You know, it's talking about. I'm talking about the college trying way to be successful, right? It needs easier it is because they are talented enough already. It's just mm -hmm. they have to sit and fit in the system right. And faster they do, the coaches say, "Oh, this guy is coachable. That's great for us." You know what I have seen. Yeah. Guys. Okay. That's good stuff. That's good mm -hmm. stuff. Man, yeah. your internet a little shaky, you know, man. The, you gotta get some bars or something. A lot of times you need to realize that. Yeah. And we lose it. Yes. Let me see. Maybe Wi-Fi is Georgian Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah we Georgian Wi-Fi, man. I'm yeah, sorry. Should be better. You know, my he's hurting my interview. I thought I was trying. I was trying to take your job. <laughs> but I think that's a no, big thing. You know. Adapt, adapting, I think, for all Americans. That was one of the, I've seen some suffer, you know, always keep their headphones in and don't try to learn the language and don't, and it definitely hurts, uh, hurts the team, but also I think hurts their performance, ultimately. And you don't mm -hmm. learn, you know, you can learn a lot from all those different great players. You know, I learned a lot from all, a, lot, a lot of my teammates because I just got to know them and watch them work and you know, just enjoy the time, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for, the, you know, Mar Manu comes on now. I haven't spoken to Manu since maybe I left 
but that was my teammate you know what i mean and it's great to you know it's great to see him again because i would take my headphones out he would take his headphones out and we wouldn't be on instagram all the time and we would actually share some moments you know so it's pretty cool that's that's important yeah and, right. and you mentioned that that transition from basically from states to european type of basketball what would you advise to the guys who already know that probably when they're graduating they'll go overseas and so what your advice would be for them just to make sure that transition comes smoother is there something i understand the type of basketball is still different but is there something they can do in order to be more prepared like i, I said uh get as soon as possible get a routine but also be present you know a lot of guys they get so homesick or they're so worried about trying to make it to the nba or they're so that they don't focus on where they're at and making that mm -hmm. the best situation as possible. And like, if I could echo what Manu said, you know, it's some of it is going to be new basketball, new terminology, new way to play new and just embrace the new and embrace the system, be coachable, really be coachable and see what, see what you can learn and take from every coach, every situation. And um, I think that'll help them go far, help them jump a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Well, I have one more question left, but there is, you, you remember Nikolai? He was a DOBO for Windy City Bulls, I think, two years ago. Yeah, I met, him, I met him at the Combine. I met him a couple of places. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he has a question. Let me just unmute him and he'll probably respond. Can you hear me? Hey. Okay. Yes. Hello, sir. Here you go. Good to see you. You too, man. Good to see you. So um, I've got a question. You guys have probably the most international team staff uh, around the G League with you, Martin, and Coach Damien. <clears throat> so my question is, did you guys bring anything European or international to, to the coaching part, or did you guys stick to the big team uh, system? I mean, as far as the system and the offenses, we, we tried to mirror what up top did. But the way we practiced, we definitely brought an international style as far as more shooting in practice. Also, uh, I think, I think, I think uh, the way international play, the way, you know, most teams build up maybe one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, three on three, four on four, you know, five or five on five, you know, a, a lot of overseas teams do that. I think we we definitely did some of that in the the practice and and we haven't seen I haven't seen as many G League teams do that. Uh, also, you know the NBA is so analytics driven, analytics based right now. Yep. And overseas isn't as strong yet. I guess following the numbers or coaching towards the numbers, but we we took a strong look at our guys and we said we're going to help them. A lot of them, their role their where they'll end up is not the NBA a lot of them will be overseas and so we said well how can we help them so some of the shots maybe we worked on or some of the things that we worked on uh were more geared to helping prepare them to go play overseas gotcha so your experience was definitely helpful for them so that's good I mean, I hope so. You know, one thing I know, especially if you're a guard or, you know, and you're American, you go over there, you got to have, you have to keep the scoreboard ticking, you know, or it's, they're sending somebody else on a flight, right? So you got to, uh, you got to be able to score the ball in different ways. And, it, you know, that doesn't always, you know, sometimes you have to create in the mid-range overseas, just the way the yep. game is played. And, yep. you know, the NBA is trending less and less towards that, but we, I still felt it valuable for, to teach some of our guys. Sure. I see a lot of a lot of G League guys right now having successful careers in European basketball, like Thomas Walker, who plays for Jalgeris. You know, he really he does mm -hmm. hell of a job, and he is under a really great coach. So it's good to see players really, really getting better and better. And we had, uh, do you remember Bruce Macy, who played for uh, Grand Rapids Drive, uh, combo guard? He was like okay. 16, 17 season, mm -hmm. and he plays in Ukraine right now. And so our federation even thinking to give him a passport to play for the national team. So wow, wow, yeah. So sounds good. I'm all for that. You know, shout out my Bosnian people. Hi, Mo Bosna. <laughs> <laughs> 
And Anybody so obviously, uh, Henry, you mentioned, mm, you said that you're trying to help the players adjust, where, uh, help the players get those shots that they may use, they may take in Europe. Uh, so it doesn't mean that uh, obviously the coaching philosophy in general of the team is more about developing the players rather than winning, or you're still trying to hit both? Uh, you first have to understand how the big organization defines success. Some teams, it may be just strictly development. Some teams, it's we want you to win games. Some teams, it's, you know, we want to develop coaches, you know, mm -hmm. and so put coaches in certain situations. So you got to understand what success, but, but also you want to help the guys and help the players. And, you know, our focus was development from the get-go, even if we even had to sacrifice a game, some games to develop sacrifice and winning so it was fun that way and the guys really embraced it because they knew you were trying to help them you know it wasn't just about okay. winning games or things like that we were generally trying to develop them and to help them move on to be in a better situation wherever they go from here and so it was fun you know it was fun to see help guys get better and you know you work on a left hand for three weeks and then that guy goes in the game and use that left hand and you you know you celebrate you know i want to you know, shoot fireworks after they do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, talking about development, how do you try to, how do you build that development system through the season? For example, if we take a player who's not getting uh, a lot of minutes, a low minute guy who's maybe like the 10th on the team, how do you build uh, basically a project for him to make sure within the G League season he still develops? Um, I think... I think first of all, I'm big with keeping it simple and, and uh, first build, put themselves in a box or whatever. Let's just do one or two things that can maybe get you some more time or one or two things I think that you can improve on. And okay. then you just build on it step by step like a ladder. I, I, don't, I don't like work. Let's not work on a hundred things and you don't get better at anything. Let's work on one or two things and then build on that I think is is one way, but you keep it simple and then, you know, you enjoy what you do. I, I definitely am big on wanting guys to, they want to be there, want to keep coming back, you know, so make it fun, make it build, and then guys are going to get better. If, if they're enjoying what they do and they're bought in, they're working hard, they'll get better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how often would you show them the progress? How often would, would you give them the heads up? Uh, sometimes it takes time, but we, whenever we able to see it, we want to celebrate that success. We want to make that success known. Uh, sometimes it comes quicker than others, but um, whenever, you know, with the season, with all the work, that, but whenever I have an opportunity, if I realize, oh, you've been, you, the last month, you shot 40% from corner threes. And, uh, you know, before that you were at 31%, then, hey, let's celebrate that success, you know? <laughs> different things like that, whatever it is you've been working on. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more thing I want to cover quickly uh, is those pregame workouts, those quick 20 minute workouts. Uh, in your opinion, what is the key to make them as efficient as possible? Have a plan, um, have a little bit of a routine, I would say, but be willing to change, you know, for whatever circumstance and uh, I think communicate to the guys before you, you go out there. Like it may be, I may show a little edit, a video before I'll say, look, this is what I had. This is what I, my plan today. We're going to do some touch finishing. We're going to finish, you know, opposite hand finishing. Then we're going to get some mid range, go right to our threes, do this, have a little bit. So they understand the plan a little bit, but also let them understand the idea behind it. And like I told you, our idea was development. So we're going to use that time to develop because we don't have a lot of practice days during the season once it really gets rolling. So I have 15 minutes with you right now. Let's use this time to develop and not just, oh, you get a rhythm for, for the game. Let's use this time mm -hmm. to really develop, you know, and get better. And so as long as they have mm -hmm. those understandings, you know, I think that, that's where we had some success. And what shows, you, uh, what shows you that you need to change that routine a little bit to change that workout? Uh, sometimes it could be an injury or how they, you know, the body, maybe they have pain, something like that. It may be, uh, 
a game plan thing if you know we know we know they're going to be in a drop defense and they haven't been shooting pull-ups really well or they haven't been snaking or cross-graining really well and making good decisions then let's work on that a little bit more if it's you know if it's physicality on drives then maybe i'm gonna stand under there and bump them while they're driving you know so changing for the game plan changing for how they feel and changing for uh maybe statistics maybe it's six or three months into the season and we recognize we've been practicing this, but you're not getting better at your left hand floater or whatever. Then, hey, we maybe have to try something different. Okay, okay, and that's a good point for sure. Uh, I have one more so far, and I love asking that to all the coaches because obviously all of us say, if I knew then what I know now, I would do this and this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what advice would you give to a younger self? Maybe to to yourself when you were just fresh out of college and you played your first year at, I think, Pinar Kershiaka yeah. in Turkey. Um, so what advice would you give to yourself back then? Like, I would be more deliberate, like I said, about my routine early on. You know, I had okay. so much free. I went from when you're American going over there, you have so much free time. So I would win the battle with recovery way better win the battle as i you know you usually the young guys don't don't really worry about recovery and stretching and ice or massaging and all of this till they get a little bit older and things start to hurt but i would win that battle like that's a battle recovery and i have a plan for that i have a plan where i would get my extra shots my extra work actually have a plan of and maybe it'll be with an assistant coach or whatever but have a plan, not just say, you know what, I'm going to stay after practice and make 50 shots or 25 shots, but actually have a plan of this is where I want to get to. These are the things, these are the things I need to work on to get to there. So have a routine with the recovery battle, have a routine with that. Also be way more clean with my eating. I remember I was at FS and on the way to the game, EuroLeague games, I was getting um, cheeseburger Happy Meal from McDonald's before that. I was like my pregame meal. <laughs> Uh, if I consider myself a Ferrari, you can't just put diesel fuel in a Ferrari, you know, in the States at least. So I want to put good gasoline in. So just being more deliberate with how I eat. I think that, that, uh, those things just being way more attention to detail. Everybody's talking about the Mamba mentality and things like that. Right. Like with Kobe and how mm -hmm. he worked. And I just felt like, especially when I was younger and my body could take it, I would have, um, just not necessarily work harder all the time, but work smarter, plan the work, and uh, eat better, and recover, recover way better because those over those two a days, man, <laughs> those two a days overseas are different. You know how Aaron says, uh, Aaron Jackson always talk, talks about that when we work. He's like, "Well, NBA years, I'm still 30." Your league years, I'm already 41. <laughs> and that's how he's talking about those two a day. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it make, makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's definitely different. And then, you know, I played for Pesic. And I played for some, some of those coaches where, you know, we're running in the mountains. And even Manu knows when you play for Ottoman, if you lose, you know, you might have practice after the game. <laughs> you know, you will have practice after the game, things like that. So. Definitely re treating your body better, recovering is, is something. And also your body is what makes your money. So you got to definitely, I would treat it, you know, with the highest part regard. I didn't do that as well <laughs> when I was young. I was eating, I was getting a shipment from the States, getting honey buns, eating those things like they were chiclets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Well, uh, that's that's it for me for my questions. But since Manu is here, don't you mind if I ask him one more about what his advice would be to a younger self? Let's go. I love it. One second, Manu. Yeah. So pretty much, what would you uh, what would you do a little bit differently, maybe in your first years when you were playing professionally, just since knowing what you already know now. Uh, honestly, I, I'll agree with Henry a lot because my work ethic or my overworking ethic hurt my career a lot. I had been five times surgery. You know, I had the five surgeries. Mm -hmm. And not knowing what I was doing and forcing myself sometimes, I would hold it down a little bit, work smart. And like Henry said, I'm copying him a lot. 
And the next thing would be uh, because I would try to find more time because since I have been professional, I have been with the national team too. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. my summers was always busy and I could not pay attention to my personal skill development mm -hmm. because European game is nine months, eight months straight. Yeah. And you are always in a system and you really don't have time for your individual game. Only 20 minutes a day, maybe, if coach you know, calls you or something. So I would pay more attention to what Henry said, exactly what I would do this. This I missed, missed all the career. And now I'm a little jealous because the games in European Championship and rest, national teams play during the, the year. And in the mm -hmm. summer, you have two months to take care of your body, recover well, and then work smart and uh, get development from uh, coaches that know better than me, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, to teach me new things, you know. This is what I missed all my career a lot. Mm -hmm. And do you think there will still be a possibility uh, to kind of like work on your own development even during the national team training? You know, uh, like like Henry said, two a days, it goes everywhere, you know, like we would go mm -hmm. in the camps and we would have these two a days. And Igor and uh, Duros and all the coaches try to give you, but all these developments are according to the systems. Like he mm -hmm. was mentioning in a G League, if you facing the team that play drop downs, they will teach you how to pull up the game. But it's not more specific on certain things. It is what is good for the team and what is good for the system. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, of course, you develop, of course, you work on it, but it's not everyday basis. It's once a week, twice a week. And mm -hmm. I believe to improve something, to get better in something, you need to learn and need to work every day. And just for an example, if my problem was left hand every time and we would work on it, my coach would say, don't go left because you see you can't finish it. <laughs> so because I didn't work enough or because going left, I knew I can pull up the best. So I would not go all over and I would pull up. And if you train something and you don't use it on the game, you don't develop, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless yeah, it's point. free layup, you go, you go for free layup, free meal, okay. But to go in a contact, I'm talking about serious basketball, you know, left yeah. hand, how to finish in a contact over a big guy, you know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So I would pull up and find the way, but I'm talking about you need to develop and then use it in a game. Use it, use it, use it. So you know exactly where you are. So, got it, got it. So he's that's smarter than me. You see that? Yep. No, 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 Henry, man, don't say that. <laughs> I copied you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just the professional approach. That's how it is. Because I basically yes, I agree exactly. with all that both of you guys said, and it's I mean it makes sense. It's simple, but yeah, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Hey, if, I, if I may say last thing, my, 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 one of my coaches, actually, we had a fight a lot of times. He would say, like, uh, a lot of times that I couldn't do the certain things. And I would not accept it. And I would start to prove them wrong. And uh, yeah. watching this, suddenly I, suddenly I realized that I was going against myself. Then I start accepting that I had lack of certain things. I couldn't do it well. And as soon as I start accepting my problems, I start working on them smartly. Mm -hmm. Because okay. before that, I would not agree with the coach. And I would say, no, I can do it. Of course I can do it. <laughs> but it was not true. Mm -hmm. And when I realized it, then I start working on it, you know. <laughs> I think that's a big thing for younger players, especially is self-awareness, you know. And just, you know, we all yes. think we're Michael Jordan or whatever, you know, but... I think that's a big thing is to, you know, really, you know, if you have to watch yourself, whatever, but have some awareness of your strengths and your weaknesses. And some mm -hmm. guys, one of their biggest helps them sometimes, but also hurts them is their irrational confidence, you know, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, And so you know where you can get better, you know, and then, you know, 10 minutes a day on a weakness and it becomes a strength. You know, I learned yeah. that in high school and I, I, I really believe it. Yeah, because the earlier you realize what what your strengths and weaknesses are and what your limits, at least on the court as of now, the, the easier it's going to be for you to figure out what you can do on the court. Yeah, and even if it's – you can be a great player, but for the new system maybe you go to I, – I traveled to a lot of different teams, and each team I had a different role. 
And if, mm -hmm. okay, for this system, I need to have this skill set, then, you know, I better develop in this area because I want to have success. I want to play. So if I'm getting a lot of shots from the corner in this system, well, you know what? I want to practice more from the corner. You know, that's, that's normal too. And it's just mm -hmm. another way to develop and add to your, our, your game already. But knowing, knowing, you know, where you, your weaknesses, but also knowing where you can have success where you're at and develop that too. Yeah. Exactly. Adapting, adapting. You adapted uh, yeah. the best, man. I remember your Siena years too, man. You come from the bench, twenty points, easy. Uh, just yes. shoot. It. That's how, that's my adapt. You know, when you catch you, it, shoot you it. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, either I'm gonna shoot it or somebody else. So you yeah. might as well yes. be. <laughs> I may yes. have to pull up the clips later too. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I'm so but thankful yeah. for coming on here, man. I, I appreciate what you're doing. And, you know, you got to have somebody like Manu on here, man. Maybe we can all learn for sure. something. For, uh, for sure. And, nah, nah, nah. Uh, thank not you for it, this opportunity. It, I want to make sure I get that out. Yeah, thank you, Henry, for your time. And Manu, man, you hopping in, that's, I mean, that's Thanks crazy. I, mean, I was so happy because <laughs> and the topic was great Trans transition from the player to the coach that's what I'm trying to do now in yeah. my Georgia yeah. and as soon as I saw the topic and I saw Henry I didn't even know who is what's going on so immediately I dived uh -huh. in but it was a little late it was late I'm sorry for no that no worries no worries yeah. but hey so man, thanks man, a lot I appreciate it good to see you guys okay what's at me or something Manu so I got your contact what's at me or something Instagram yes. me something do that. Yes, yes, I will. I will. I will, Henry, for sure. I will. Appreciate I'll be you. In contact soon. Appreciate right, you, Bossy. Thanks. Everyone thanks, else, thanks. keep working, keep getting better. Mamba out. Yep. <laughs> Have a good one, everyone. <laughs> bye. Bye, you, bye, bye, bye. Thanks a lot. I'll, whenever we post it on YouTube, I'll say I'll send you the link, and Mana, I'll send you the link too, just so All you right. can watch. Perfect. Later. Yes. Sounds good. Oh, okay. Yes. Thanks. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Take care, fellas.